we took to the streets to find out. And that is the embarrassing aspect of it. Because I, 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 I know personally that um, in everything it deals with law. And then, as we said, the dialogue, or we just debate and then come out with substantive uh, um, issues concerning all these things. And then, at the end of the day, they draw a conclusion. So then, you, you also ask, why then did uh, Abambagwin also left uh, his seat? Just to make way for the uh, first uh, uh, deputy speaker to also come. So, so the minority was having an agenda, and the majority was also thinking that then there's something wrong somewhere. To the microphone, the parliament, you know, and yet. Because first in history, what they are doing at the parliament is uncalled for. I used to have so much respect for parliamentarians, but not anymore. It's very disgusting. Parliament will mean will be that since my mommy will be baby. I see, yeah, to our baby, our baby, I'm to you the same thing. No, yeah, and not sure the papa 40 parliament. Yeah, yeah, when you know, yeah, the boy, my this is rather unfortunate. We thought parliament is supposed to be a place where we the citizens will sit down and watch with admiration. So, what do we see as what we saw yesterday was very unfortunate. I'm expecting the two parties or the two caucus to sit down together and your job and come out with the best policy that will help the nation. And that's all. That, that is all that we are expecting. Me here, me mami ti takwa. Na me kosen ni ska na mkoti a. Na yesa opese mu kwia na. Do they want to kill us? My fridge is poor as a result of them so. And now e levy. I have lost respect for parliamentarians. Wa sister ma omo ya parliament no mu nyai. Sister me mu mu parliamentaria bia. Because do omo ya na ye nkrase se. Yeah, so if they want to vote and they know they will fight, they should go to Bukuma Arena and stop destroying our properties. Because what they, what they are doing is very, very poor. There is no sense in it. Why should a whole MP fighting over e levy? You are the lawmaker and you are fighting. What do you expect me, the citizen, to do? You are expecting me to, to obey the rules and regulations of the country. No, I'm going to act more than what you are doing in the parliament. So they should advise themselves. We can now bring in Dr. Rashid Ramani, who is Executive Director at the Africa Center for Parliamentary Affairs. Doc, I'm grateful for your time and your patience. It's obvious your advice for the consensus building has fallen on deaf ears. As we saw a recap of what we saw on the night of January 8th, something we prayed never to happen again. Yes, indeed, Aisha. I think um, it looks like the situation is destined worse by the day. Um, and it looks like um, both sides have taken a very entrenched position. Uh, but for me, I think I would still call for some dialogue and some consensus. You know, at the end of the day, uh, the zero-sum approach that they have on this issue, particularly the E-Levy, uh, is not going to take either side anywhere. I think they are better off, and the country is better off with, uh, you know, some win-win situation. I mean, win-win is always better than zero-sum. Um, again, the lawyer was earlier making reference to you know some of the democracies from which we take inspiration you know just yesterday in the u.s a senator said that he was not going to back the president's uh, signature bill that that was uh, in congress you now the president reached out to that senator i'm talking about president biden here and the senator from West Virginia, he reached out to him and said, let's go and have dinner and tell me what, what you need me to do in order to accommodate your consent so that I can get my bill passed. In the end, what is likely to happen is that the president might not get all the trillions that he has asked for, but he says, I'm better off getting something than getting nothing. And so when we bring down this home, uh, I think at the end of the day, um, 
our country will be better off and our democracy will be better off if we get to a situation where you know the NDC moves from that uh, zero or nothing and the MPP moves from the 1.75 or nothing. Uh, let them converge somewhere in the middle uh, and then let's get this country moving. It is true, um, E-Levy is not a bill that is popular. I mean, I believe if you take your microphone out there, maybe nine out of 10 or 10 out of 10 are going to tell you, you know, this is not going to do anybody any good. Uh, I mean, in terms of uh, us, the citizenry. Uh, but, you know, parliament concerns itself not only about how the expenditures uh, are incurred and what have they been done according to the law, but also it concerns itself about how revenues can be generated. I hear, I hear the NDC pointing to a number of sources from which government can raise revenue. Uh, for instance, the Auditor General's uh, report all the money that we lose as a country and so on and so forth, uh, which is all fine. But for me, they were also in government. And I don't think that during their time, uh, the Auditor General did not produce reports that showed that people were embezzling funds and were losing a lot of resources. So I think we need to, uh, to look at these issues very, very carefully. And uh, at the end of it all, uh, it is good that, you know, Parliament has been adjourned. Hopefully, you know, this will be the time that they will all not go back, go to sleep. Rather, a lot of hard work will need to be done so that by the time they reconvene, at least uh, we'll see some cool heads prevailing in the house. Uh, and then maybe we can hopefully see the business of the house um, thriving again. We have a hold uh, on there, Dr. Rashid Dramani, and bring in uh, Professor Lord Mensah, who is an associate professor at the uh, Finance Department of the University of Ghana Business School. Uh, Prof, I'm grateful for your time uh, this afternoon. We have seen what has happened, and it means that the ELV is on hold. Certainly, this has implications for government business, correct? Uh, Prof, uh, kindly unmute for me. Yes, can you hear me now? Loud and clear. Okay, good. Um, well, it has economic implications, but uh, it does not mean that management of the economy has been halted, you know, completely. I mean, if we are to play by the numbers, um, clearly that six billion, seven billion that can be raised from the um, yield levy it shouldn't stop government from running. Because um, if you look at our budget, Government's indication of um, increasing revenue goes beyond the six billion. So, if for nothing at all, let's meet last year's target without the yield levy. We, we should be able to run the country. I mean, as expected, it's good. I mean, to have Parliament going on recess to do a thorough consultations and coming back. Um, I can tell you that we can still run this country whether E-Levy or without E-Levy. So um, I don't see anything strange that will come up to say that uh, because of the E-Levy, maybe workers are not going to be paid because of the E-Levy. Maybe government might not get an excess, I mean, as expected. I mean, I mean, doing things that will satisfy the people necessarily might not come true. So maybe for the meantime, if you're not getting your road fixed or you're not getting something done, maybe you may have to wait, I mean, for a while. But to say that um, the governance and economic administration of this country is going to ground to a halt, um, I, 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 I will hold on for now. I think we can, we can run the country. Indicated that it seeks to uh, generate some amounts from this e levy, and it says it will help in creating jobs, it will help in infrastructure development, and a lot more. And you say government doesn't need this? Well, I'm not completely saying that government does not need that. If it comes through, I mean, most of the policies that government has out outlined 
will, will be realized. But if it does not come through, then let's assume that we are resetting the country as you know last year. I mean, last year we, ended, we ran the country without E11. And so uh, for me, uh, I think uh, we should be fine. Um, we may have to look at extremes, but I don't think this is going to have any extreme impact on, on economic activities. Find out uh, from you, Dr. Lord Mensa, what other uh, avenues we have available for us to generate revenue to run the country. Let me bring you in, Dr. Rashid Draman. Uh, is this an indication we will see more of this going forward with the hung parliament that we have now? Oh, yes, Aisha. I think uh, we said on January 7 that if care was not taken, we were going to be. Uh, see a parliament that will be gridlocked throughout the, the entire mandate of the eighth parliament. And I think, uh, you know, the events around the, the, the budget process are a very clear indicator. Uh, if we don't get, you know, some dialogue and some consensus, genuine indeed, I mean, they have to come to the table uh, and be very, very sincere in the in in, in the issues uh, on the issues that they are going to negotiate on, and 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 so on. If we don't get that, uh, we are going to spend the rest of the three years of uh, the mandate of this eighth parliament arguing about uh, the role of the deputy speakers, arguing about what constitutes forum. Uh, quorum, sorry, arguing about, you know, um, who is in the majority, who is in the minority, and so on, and no business of Ghana will be done. Because if you look at even this, uh, this current meeting that has ended today, uh, I don't think they passed any, any bill outside of some of the work that they did on the budget. And it was mainly because of all this confusion and so on. I have seen in some parliaments, for reasons such as the ones that we are seeing currently unfold in our parliament, uh, those parliaments were gridlocked and, and nothing really happened over a four or five year period. So for me, I go back to my starting point on January 7th, that you know, they all have to carry every day the lessons from the 2020 elections uh, behind their minds each time they deal with each other. Uh, this is not a fifth parliament, this is not a sixth parliament, and this is not a seventh parliament. And I think the earlier they, they, they keep this in mind at all times, you know, the better. Because otherwise, uh, from some of the utterances that we hear from the ma minority side, if they say everything is going to be subjected to a vote, um, I don't see how the majority side can marshal the numbers every day uh, with some of our members of parliament performing executive duties and so on, uh, with the kind of marriage that our constitution has imposed between the executive and the and still, still have the numbers. Because in this particular instance, just one or two uh, makes a very big difference. And, and, and Aisha, we can also wake up, you know, with situations where maybe some people from the majority side might be ill and they cannot be um, in parliament on a particular day when uh, matters are being discussed and the stakes are high. It will only take dialogue and negotiation uh, for, I mean, government business to pass through in instances like this. So the lesson here is we have, it looks like uh, almost lost one year. Um, they have done some work, but I believe uh, Ghanaians are not quite satisfied with, uh, with what has transpired from January to now. Uh, they still have three more years ahead of them. Uh, they can do some catch up and uh, they can do some serious uh, dialogue and some serious negotiation. And I hope, I hope, because people are asking a lot of questions uh, on most of your platforms, where are the, the wise men of this country?
because all of a sudden it looks like uh, people are very quiet. We are not. Uh, our country has faced challenges before, but it took it took the intervention of uh, some respected citizens uh, to get the country back from the brink. So I think uh, the Christmas season and the recess period offers some opportunities uh, for some serious uh, uh, behind, behind the scenes discussions so that they would come back with some cool heads, not only to discuss the remnants of the 2022 budget, but also the rest of uh, government business in the years ahead. So, of course, definitely, we have to make headway and move on from here. Definitely, on January 18, we will certainly be back here to discuss the matter that has been put on hold. How should both sides approach issues? Aisha, both sides should go to the table with a spirit of win-win. And win-win here, win-win for our country, Ghana. I think the Ghana agenda is more important than the agenda of the NDC or the agenda of the NPP. Zero sum approach is not going to cut it. The, none of them is going to come out of this uh, not bruised. I mean, if they take a zero sum approach, as we are seeing now, you hear the first deputy speaker say, you know, this is embarrassing, they have to find the people. Uh, who were responsible yesterday and punished them. We were at this before in January when uh, some people were chewing the, the, the balance. Uh, what, what has happened to those people? You know, and we, were, we were here when the military walked into parliament. What has happened? So you see, I think we need to look at these things uh, very, very carefully. And uh, the leadership has a very important role to play in this. Otherwise, like you said, We'll come back on January 18 and then we'll be discussing the same issues. I'm grateful for your time. Dr. Rashid Rahman is Executive Director of the Africa Center for Parliamentary Affairs. Uh, Professor uh, Lord Mensah, if you're on, uh, what other avenues are available for government to generate revenue? All right, so uh, we lost Professor Lord Mensah. He will join us back to tell us if there are other avenues government can uh, tap in to generate revenue instead of the e-levy. But we can now touch base with our parliamentary correspondent, Kwesi Parker Wilson. He's been there throughout the night when the chaos was in Parliament. He's been there this morning. We know the House has adjourned to return on the 18th of January, but what led to the adjournment, especially as there's no closure on the e-levy matter? The uh, House was um, <laughs> involved in some level of chaos and some misunderstanding last night. And according to the majority leader, they need a very stupid environment to George Orr. They need who has to prevail so that going forward, they can look at how to deliberate on the E levy without any misunderstanding. And as we say, time heals. So by the time they return in January 18, members of the House would have had a better understanding. And again, there would have been a broader <coughs> consultation so that they carry everybody along. And when the bill is brought before the House, once again, it would be widely accepted by every individual, including the minority. So the whole essence is that let's take a break. Let's go consult further. Let's engage further um, to ensure that at least we factor all the concerns of the ordinary gender before we put together a bill. And this is again is also to ensure that the atmosphere in the house is is curtailed. The tension, the rancor, the acrimonious um, relationship we have at the moment uh, will be settled by the time they return. So essentially, it's to make sure that everything uh, is, uh, calm is restored to Parliament, and that is why. Parker will sing is our man and uh, definitely when they return on January 18 do we know what will be on the table for discussion in the key issue uh, on the table for discussion again will be the e and 
I shall I should I, I must say that this is an integral part of the 2022 budget. You know the projections in terms of the revenue uh, projections that government has made, and so they have factored all of that into their program for the year 2022. So it, it really will help government business if they take this e levy away. But however, the concern has been that the 1.75 percent. It's too much, it's on the high, reduce it. So this engagement will afford government the opportunity to now look at a reasonable rate, whether it is 1%, whether it is 1.5%, or even 0.05%. That is what will be done. And so when they come back, whatever decision that they take, i.e. the outcome of the consultation, will now be put before the House. And then obviously on the D-Day, I'm sure, uh, of course, I mean, uh, the MPP is certain that when they return, the e levy obviously will be approved by Parliament. And you and I will begin to pay the moment. Paka Will Singh is our man in Parliament. Thank you for the update. Thankfully, Professor Lord Mensah has joined us back. Prof, I was asking earlier what other alternative is available for government in, in the event that the e levy doesn't pass? Well, Asha, you need to understand that uh, the e-levy is not the ultimate of all revenues. I mean, without the e-levy, uh, we should be able to survive. I mean, the government revenue target was around 100 billion and over. Um, last year, we did about 70 billion uh, without the e-levy. So that should tell you that we should be able to run this economy. We should be able to generate uh, the necessary resources um for for to run this economy but then um if you look at the yield levy what we targeting um the usage of this yield levy for is mainly policies that government want to roll out so we're looking at i mean operation take away two boots we're looking at uh, infrastructure we're looking at um you know things employment creation new start initiative and all those these are things that I believe will stall for some time, but I think those are policies which um, deferring for a month or two will not change that much. I mean, as far as um, um, the governance of this country is concerned. So uh, for me, nothing is going to change that much. I mean, government will still have the necessary resources to run this country. Dr. Uh, Prof.